All right, welcome to our video on 2D arrays. In this series, we're going to create the game Shoots and Ladders. Some of you may remember this from your childhood. Here is a picture of the board, and you have pieces that move around the board. Um, when they hit on a square that has a ladder, they move up to that the other end of the ladder, and when they hit a slide, they slide down to the bottom of the slide. The R 2D array is 10 by 10. There's 100 positions on the array. Zero, however, we have a little complication here because 0, 0 in the top left is actually position 100 and 0, 9 is position 1 on the board. And so because computers start counting from 0, um, the first column is 0, the second column is 1, all the way through column 9. And um, this is a great little game to work to work with 2D arrays in Java, and also to learn some basic gra graphics with the 2D library in Java. Um, we'll use this picture, a simplified version here, as our background image, and then we'll use the 2D graphics library to draw different colored disks or pieces that can move around. And you can see here that the arrows are the ladders and the red lines are the slides. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our code. So we'll start off by creating a player class. And let's get my notes. So we'll say public class player. We'll go ahead and save this right away. So you want to create a folder somewhere on your computer that you can save these files. I've created a folder here for these screencasts. I'm going to hit and save player. All right, so we'll need some fields, constructor, and our assessors and mutators. So what are the things that we need to know about a player? We need to know its position on the board. If we have more than one player, we might assign a color, uh, like red or green, to each of those players. And we want the ability to name the player. Um, so we'll do string name. Let's see, price, excuse me, private string name. And then we will save color for later when we do the graphics and then we're also going to need to know the position or it's what cell it is in our 2D array so we're going to make a position class and then use it in our player class and in order to call that class in our player class we write position and then the variable in our constructor we um, say public player, and then we're going to pass in the name of the player. So we'll um, say this.name is equal to name, and then we need to instantiate the position of the player. So we'll say position is equal to new position. And that gives us an instance of the position class. Then we'll need getters and setters for each of these. So we'll say public um, string name. Sorry, get name. Return name. And our uh, mutator, so public void set name string n and name is equal to n. And then we need to do this for position. So we say public. Now it's not a integer or a string, so it's a class. So we have to use the class name. When, so we'll say public position. 
get position. And then return the position. And for our setter, we do public position public void set position. And then we pass in position POS. And then we say position is equal to POS. You could also just use P if you want to follow the naming scheme um, like we did with string. And then uh, we need to have a method that for in shoots and ladders, you usually have a little dial that you spin that gives you the values one through six. And so we'll use the math, the random method in the math library to choose between one and six, um, similar to what we did in dice poker when we had our die rolls. And then we just want to know if the player rolled or not, and then add that number of moves to its position. So we can make a Boolean method that says basically rolled or not. So we'll say public Boolean roll. And then we'll take our roll and we'll cast it as, first of all, we need to do math.random to get a value between 0 and 1. We need to multiply it by our number of chances, which is 6, because you can roll 1 out of 6. And we want 1 to 6. We can't move position 0, a 0 numbers of times. So we'll add 1 to our roll so that we get a value between 1 and 6. And we need to make sure it's a whole number, so we'll cast it as an integer. And because of order of precedence, we are getting the number, then multiplying it by 6, then turning it into an integer, and then finally adding 1 to make sure that we don't have 0. And so we can go ahead right here. That oh, We need to add a semicolon to the end. And we need to, we can print out the result to the user if we want to in the interaction pane. So we'll just say system dot out dot print ln you rolled a roll. And then we will um, return and we'll just, um, we're going to call the add in our return. You can actually call methods. So we'll just say position dot add and then we'll pass in our roll, which is either going to be a one through six. And so this add method we'll see is in our position class, which we will write in the next video. And we'll just go ahead and finish up this class by adding a comment here. Roll and adds the value to the current position. of the player in the position class. I'm going to go ahead and make this a multi-line comment by doing asterisk star. OK, so let's go ahead and save. And then we'll compile. And we're just missing a semicolon down here. And then this is throwing an error because we don't have a position class yet. Let's check our other errors to make sure that they're just related to the position, missing position class, which we'll write next. Class position, class position. Yes, they all seem to be related to the missing position class. So this class is good. And in our next video, we will write the position class. See you next time.